I've lost track of how many days we've been in the camper. Um, let's see, we moved in July 1st. Um, July has 31, August has 31, so that's 62. September has 30, so that's 92. Today's the 8th. So we are at exactly 100 days living in the camper and RV. I still contend it makes it easier getting around, but as I'm getting more comfortable with moving around, I want my house or a house. I need to get out of this RV. Anyway, you've tuned in because you're interested in how the progression is working or how my leg is doing. So, Stump's doing really well. Um, still no phantom pain. I do have some phantom symptoms, but no phantom pain still. So, that's awesome. I fell the other night. Uh, I was at a friend's house here in BC and um, was taking a shower and went to stand up and whoop, boom, right onto my back in the bath. That hurt. Thankfully, I did not land on my stump. Um, I made sure to keep that up. So learning to fall is definitely a must when you're an amputee. Learning how to fall so you don't land on your stump because that can be really painful. Um, also went and had a massage yesterday for the first time since I've had an amputation. Only my third time ever in my life, but my first time since my amputation. So that was kind of weird having someone massaging my stump for me. Um, but oh, it was so nice to have a massage. I have progressed to the point in my shrinkage where I was wearing 15 thickness of the socks. Um, where is that at? Ugh. Oh, no, that's not a sock. Here it's 15 thickness. Um, that's a three, but I had two of the fives, a three and then a one, and it was still too loose. And I know that my prostheticians, Geiger Prosthetics and Visalia, they had given me some pads to put on as we were traveling as my leg shrunk. And I probably should have put it on before it got to 15. And I bought the contact cement, and I had the bonding tape, um, really strong, uh, carpentry tape that they recommended. I had all those things. I had the pads and then I lost where I put the pads. So I went to the store and I looked for something similar to the pads. I was able to find basically, oh, sorry about that. basically I was able to find cushions that you would put under your foot if, for example, you have, um, like need some extra padding in your shoes. I decided to use those. They're about the right thickness. And by adding a few of them together, I could get the right shape and size. Trying to take your leg, the shell out, it's really hard to do. And, um, afraid like I'll break it and this is only my second time taking the inner shell out and, uh, excuse me a moment uh, so there was some construction construction tape on the back connecting the two and now I think my contact cement may have seeped out of my tape and bonded the shell. Let's hope not. And part of why I show the struggle is so that you know it's okay to struggle. Um, not everything is ugh, not everything is always handy dandy hunky dory. That's the word phrase. Hopefully your liner, hopefully you'll be smarter than I was and make sure your contact cement is fully dry. Before 
I'll, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So, you grabbed scissors, and um, I'm not exactly sure, but so you can see that I have some of the red construction tape. Um, let's see if you can see. Uh, you can kind of see the outline of the pads. I put three in. Um, I still don't know what I did with the pads previously. Um, that they gave me design for this, but you do what you gotta do. Um, we're still waiting on our official PR status. It was supposed to have been in here or been given to us by September 28th. And so as a result, we're here at October 8th and still don't have PR status, which as a result also means I do not have insurance up here yet. So I'm not able to go and see somebody unless I want to pay the private pay. Now, I've gone to see a regular primary and I uh, have to say, much better coverage up here. Even without insurance, it was only $70, 70 Canadian. And that's what, 50, 55 US? And that's just about what my copay was with insurance in the US. Um, I had to go get an x-ray done because I dropped something heavy on my foot. I was like, couldn't it have landed on my prosthetic, my fake foot? No, it had to land on my real foot. Um, so my left foot was all purple and bruised and really sore for several days. So I had to get an x-ray of that to make sure that it didn't break anything. It didn't, mind you, but it's uh, very weird to have my best foot be my prosthetic because I dropped something on it. The other thing that I had experienced um, or had to deal with was um, even that going to the urgent care or what they call walk-in clinics up here is still about the same as I would pay in the States. Come on, U.S., get with it. I mean, as a private pay in Canada... It was just as, as inexpensive as someone with insurance in the state. So, anyway, um, so the pads, oops, the pads that they provided looked something like that. You can see they're not terribly thick, um, and those are the ones that they had put on previously when I was having some when I was getting adjusted for the leg and making sure it fit properly. So I've added quite a bit onto it. Sorry if the camera keeps rotating on you. Um, so you can see the outline. I put three of those on there. And tonight, I'm sorry I didn't post that, but tonight I am going to be using Odor Eaters Ultra Comfort or Ultra Confort in French. Um, odor destroying insoles or odor destroying caps. I don't know. Um, because it's going to be up in the calf area because I need it to be thick again. Because even though I added the padding, I needed a lot more because it, um, I put on the padding and I'm still wearing 10 thickness so I should have been able to get enough padding where it went back to like no thickness or just one or two so the point that I'm at 10 still means I still have I sh shrunk a lot um, and that's good it's just really fast um, so anyway I'm gonna open up my insoles way I'm gonna have to cut them in half. I wish I could find my contact cement because now I've misplaced my contact cement. Fun times. All right. 
it. So I'm basically just going to measure about half of it, exactly. Oh, I think I just remembered where my contact cement is. Hold that thought. All right, my husband knew, I told him where I thought it was. He actually knew where it was for me, so. Oh, sorry, that's the French side. There we go, Le Page, contact cement, heavy duty. Um, says drying time is 15 minutes. Our strongest contact cement dries clear and it includes a brush. I wanted to make sure of that. So all I'm gonna do is slap some of that onto this and put it onto my leg. Sorry, I'm not doing this exactly at a table because the kids are in the other room sleeping. Or at least they're supposed to be sleeping. They are fighting sleep. Anyone had any ideas of some 3D printed legs covers they'd like to see my husband print for me? Ugh. I remember where the other one went to. Alright. Just gonna kinda slather it on there. Hard the skin in your way. I want to get a lot on there so that way the other ones weren't really sticking very well I think because I was trying to spread the contact cement too thin and considering the contact cement isn't terribly expensive I just I don't like putting lots of stuff on lots of glue because then you have like seepage and could have also been that it was outside and was drying too fast while I was doing it I don't know anyway Whew, that's some strong, heavy-duty smell. All right, so I'm basically just going to apply it like so. And I'm gonna hold it in place. What do you think? Count to 45 and then we'll apply some tape to for reassurance. One, two, three, four. All right, I'm back. I didn't think you wanted to see me count to 45. I can, by the way. Anyway, um, so I've held it on. It's still very loose around the edges. I can go ahead and add some extra to those areas. count to 45 again I'll be back now I'm not too worried about the sides sticking up because I know I'm going to be putting the duct tape on or the construction tape so that'll help add some reinforcement and I'm actually going to go ahead and do some of that now I am not going to be putting the construction tape over the whole thing yet because I'm going to do something extra at the bottom because I've noticed when I was walking that the pin that sticks through the leg from my st um, stump cover thingamabob, um, it moves a lot more so than the rest of up above. So I think it's extra loose down below. Um, so I want to make sure then that I have the extra, like extra, extra padding down at the bottom. Ooh, do -do 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 -do. I don't know if you want to see. Um, so instead of... There we go. I got these uh, safety scissors. They have a little button. They're supposed to be childproof, but I think they're more adult proof than child proof because my kids know how to work them. I'm going to do one more little strip of 
just put those down. I don't need to close them every time my kids, like I said, are in the other room. on like that down here is where I'm gonna be adding what I decided to do is I'm going to add this the bottom part that I cut off I'm gonna add it kind of around like so since it's extra loose at the bottom um, so I think though I want to cut a little bit so it'll help shape it because when you try to take a, uh, a rectangle and put it onto a spherical object, uh, the curve prevents it from lying flat. So you want to try to make some sort of cutout to help and accommodate that give. See? So it's a lot bigger like that, but when I lay it down onto a spherical object, it's a lot closer. So keep that in mind when you're adding padding to or rectangular shape. All right, I should probably put this over here. Then I don't have to cross over. I'm learning, I'm learning. Oops, don't spill the contact cement. I, that's also key, because that would not be very fun to try to clean up. I also was it, we were able to get our daughter enrolled in kindergarten here, and she is in a French immersion program, and really liking the program so far. I like her teacher, um, and I'm going in tomorrow to talk to her class. Um, I'm volunteering on Wednesdays anyway, but I'm going in tomorrow because and get to talk to the class because apparently the students have questions about my lake. Um, one student is kind of afraid, so we're gonna try to normalize it as much as we can um, and be, try to explain there's nothing to be afraid of. I'm still a weird person, but that's just normal for me and that there's nothing to be afraid of when someone looks different. We all have differences about us what makes us special and unique. Um, they have somebody here in Canada years ago named Terry Fox ugh, who had cancer and ran across ran across ran across Canada for cancer research. And so every year I think Terry Fox died, but every year the Canadian students and their classmates do the Terry Fox run. So my daughter did that a couple weeks ago. Anyway, Terry Fox was an amputee um, and was also a right leg amputee, if I recall. Um, so I thought that was cool. So I offered to her school that if they wanted me to come in and talk to any of the students, I'm more than happy to, because for me, I think that by talking with others and especially students and little kids and get them to understand that there's nothing weird or scary about somebody with a prosthetic um, can help others, especially if, say, they ever run across a classmate that might have an amputation. Um, it's just happens sometimes. You might notice there's some purple in my hair. <sighs> anyway, uh, where'd my tape go? So I'm going to go ahead and put the tape. Seriously, kids, so hi. Don't do that. That smell is very, very strong. Now, some of the other things that I've been up to um, with the amputation. I have talked to some of her, my daughter's friends who have seen me out on the playground 
um, like when I've come to pick her up after school. Um, and so I'll answer the questions. I start the conversation sometimes because they're, I can see that they're watching me and are curious of what's going on. Um, and this way they, uh, by starting the conversation with them, it helps to break the, the ice for them and they feel more comfortable then. Um, so, I'm trying to hold it so you can see it while I'm doing it. It's a lot hard, harder when I'm on the bed. So make sure when you're putting the tape on that you get that triangle to no longer be a triangle. Now it's one thing for the tape to kind of go at a weird wonky angle, but you don't want the padding to be wonky. So you can see my tape's way down here on this side, but then way up here. So. put a little bit more tape right here to hold that side and that's about it so hopefully when I put this on tomorrow um, it, I don't have to wear the 10 stockings still um, actually I wasn't wearing 10 I was wearing 13 that's right I was hoping I could have at least gotten down to 10 I tried 10 at one point after I did the padding but it really didn't do much so I'm hoping that with this thicker padding, it should be much better. So there we go. I have now added quite a bit of padding to my sock or shell, inner shell. Um, we'll see how it goes, does tomorrow. I'll keep you posted on that. I'll post a video and let you know. Um, but it's still kind of soft, so it'll give some, um, but it should definitely help. There's the two that they added on, and um, yeah, because I noticed my leg was 